Since AMD introduced their 3D vCache technology, we all learned that you can take a chip and push it a lot further by stacking more and more and more cache on top of each other. The 5800X3D was certainly a crit when they threw that thing onto an almost dying platform. In the end, the 5800X3D was the gaming CPU to go for. That thing was amazing doing that one very specific job. And now, now we got the 7800X3D, the Gen 4 version of the gaming CPU. Compared to the older version, the 7800X3D comes in a very similar fashion. An oversized box containing a lot of styrofoam and no cooler. Unfortunate, but the trend continues and you got to get your own aftermarket cooler if you are not willing to let it burn out in the first few seconds. However, compared to the 5800X3D, the 7800X3D is a Zen 4 chip. So we are looking at an AM5 motherboard this then, of course, means DDR5 RAM only and packed with 28 PCIe 5.0 lanes and a AHS, which might look interesting, but takes hours to clean. Inside the 7800X3D, we got 8 cores and 16 threads running on a single CCD configuration and boosting up to 5 GHz from their 4.2 GHz base clock. But as this is a 3D chip, the magic happens in form of the L3 cache. Compared to the 32 MB that can be found on a 7700X, the 7800X comes with a stacked pile of 96 MB of L3 cache, something that will hopefully be noticeable later on in the gaming benchmarks. As for the integrated GPU, nothing really changed. Just like any other Ryzen 7000 chip, we still got that RDNA 2 mini GPU, which is good to run a monitor. But enough of the general talk, let's get to some numbers. To get all of our numbers, we used the chip in combination with a Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master and two sticks of 16 gigs G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo running at 6000 using Expo and a RTX 4090. Before every CPU switch, we reset the BIOS to default and only enabled Expo. Starting off with some actual core speed numbers. Running Cinebench single core, we were able to observe that the core used actually clocked slightly higher than advertised at 5.05 GHz. Switching over to multi-core, all of the cores were able to maintain a clock speed of 4.825 GHz. Whilst maintaining that speed, the complete package drew just 84 watts. Out of all of the chips we've tested for our Ryzen 7000 3D coverage, this is by far the lowest value and it's even 30 watts below the entry level 7600X. This also then translates into a easiness to cool it down. We have a separate video about that and you can go check it out, but compared to every other Ryzen 7000 chip, you do not need a big cooler. And during all of the Cinebench loops, the highest number we have seen for the 7800X3D was 81.9 degrees C, the absolute lowest of the whole bunch. Now let's get into some actual synthetics. Starting off with Cinebench, in a single core run, the 7800X3D scored 1814 points, ending up in the last spot. For multi-core, it's not the lowest anymore, but still not great. At 7906 points, the only reason it won against the 7600X was the higher core count. In CPU-Z, the same thing happened again. At 694.2 points, the 7800X3D did not perform particularly well on a single core. And on all core, the core count pushed it up to the second last spot at 7346. Passmark's CPU score showed the same multi-core behavior with the 7800X3D only beating the 7600X. Then we ran 3 Mark CPU profile benchmark which shows the performance gains by multiplying the amount of threads for every run until all of them are being used. Here we can see how all of this scales with more cores. Where only a single thread is running, the 7800X3D marked the last spot, the same for 2 and 4, and it took until 8 for the 7800X3D to outperform the 7600X, which of course makes total sense. And from there it got a bit higher, but never quite on the level of the 7700X. 
In PC Mark 10, again, the same thing, 9002 points for the 7800X3D marked the end of the list. Moving on to some encoding and rendering jobs. Transcoding a 5 minute H264 clip into H265 showed that the 7800X3D took significantly longer compared to the 7700X. In Corona 10, also the same thing. For the three Blender 3.6 scenes, the difference was significantly smaller, but still the same thing. So far, it does not look particularly well for the 7800X 3D. In single core performance, it is dominated by even the 7600X, and in multi core, the theoretically lower model number 7700X wipes the floor with it. However, this was expected. After all, it has the lowest single core boost clock out of them all, and it cannot maintain an all core boost clock above 5 GHz, at least not without optimization. Something that the older two can do without breaking a sweat. And so far, we have not looked at a single use case that actually utilizes that stacked L3 cache, so let's get into gaming. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the ties really changed. Average, min, max, 1% low and 0.1% low. The 7800X 3D beats both the 7600 and 7700X. On average, the 7800X 3D pushed over 400 FPS. That's more than 80 FPS more than the 7700X. The 1% lows were not quite as far apart, but a 20 FPS gain is nothing to ignore. In Far Cry 6, we are looking at the same thing. In every metric, the 7800X3D significantly outperformed the 7700X and 7600X. And this time, it's getting kind of brutal. The average FPS over the whole run became ridiculously close to the maximum frame counter on the 7700X. In Rainbow Six Siege, it was the first time that the 7800X did not win in every metric. Except for the max counter, the 7800X 3D absolutely dominated the other two chips. Making matters worse, the 7800X 3D pushed almost 100 FPS more in the 1% lows compared to the other two chips. For Dota 2, we are back to normal again with the 7800X wiping the floor with the competing chips. Average, min, max, 1 and 0.1% lows. The 7800X 3D is unstoppable. The only game in our library that produced a different result was CSGO. There we saw that CSGO just doesn't like cash. On min, max and average, the 7800X 3D managed to land on the last place, but as far as stuttering is concerned, the 7800X 3D was able to keep it a bit more consistent with better 1 and 0.1% lows. The 7800X 3D is a CPU built for gaming, and it's a good one. Quite similar to what we saw back then with the 5800X 3D, these, these 3D chips are not overall top performers. The 7800X 3D was beaten by the 7600X in pretty much every single, like, single core performance chart. And in multi-performance, it only has the advantage of having more cores, but it is still being beaten by the 7700X. But it doesn't have to beat it. It's a gaming CPU. And for that one use case, no chance. This thing just flat out won. Price-wise, it's a bit of a step up from the 7700X right now. We are looking at roughly 100 euros more if you want to get that 3D cache. Adding to that, you lose slightly on basically every performance metric, except for gaming, of course, but you are basically paying to get a big FPS boost. However, there's something else to keep in mind here, which is cooling. That thing does not run hot. Something that cannot be said about the 7700X. That thing runs hot. It actually runs so cold that smaller SFF builds are becoming a possibility without bothering you with a lot of optimization. You should still do it, but out of the box, it's already fine. So where does this leave us? It's an FPS booster for a hundred bucks. If you are looking to build a raw gaming PC right now, and I mean really raw gaming PC, then I do not see a better option than the 7800X 3D as of now. That thing wipes the floor with the other ones and does not even break a sweat or consume over 100 watts while doing so. 
And that is exactly what the perfect gaming CPU should do. So as a summary, the 7800X is the perfect gaming CPU for now. Anyway, I think this should be about it for today. On a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but will also serve to remove all the fire extinguishers in the office. Because thanks to the little power consumption compared to a regular Ryzen 7000 chip, we don't need them anymore. Anyway, thank you for watching and if you want to continue, have a look at the series where we built the new radiator fan testing machine. It was a fun ride. Hope to see you in the next one and bye bye.